this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, today we are bringing you the 10 hidden features for the Galaxy S8. This is one that a lot of people always ask me about. The 10 hidden features is of course what we're known for on this channel, and we try never to disappoint. So we have the 10 hidden features coming up. We will have some videos only having uh, separate segments of the 10 hidden features. So if you're only interested in a few of these, wait for those videos to come out next week, as well as we will have the 10 more hidden features coming out next week. Cause yes, we already found 20 on this device. I've had it for a week. That means I've found a lot of hidden features. By the way, I had it for over a week before launch. So I discovered all those features you might know about too before launch. But that being said, let's get into it. The top 10 hidden features on the Galaxy S8. All right, guys. So for the first hidden feature, it definitely has to be about the camera because that's one thing that you guys care about a lot. And on this camera, it's always had portrait mode as Apple calls it or selective focus. But on this phone, the hidden feature is that it's actually the first smartphone that can do selective focus on the front camera as well. So you can actually do it on the front camera. Let's try to do it with this much light. I don't know if it actually can do it with this much light, but let's see. It actually didn't do too bad. It's a lot of light to blur out, but it actually didn't do too bad with the front camera. However, I have done a uh, front-facing selective focus earlier at a mall, and you can definitely see that it blurs out the background perfectly really cool thing about selective focus is you can always hit this icon right over here and unblur it in case you want to see what was back there and save it as a new image. So I really like that ability and again this is the first camera to have it on the front facing camera. Definitely a feature that most people still don't know about. So for the next hidden feature it has to deal with Bigsby. Now Bigsby is still not working that well in this pre-production model that I do have, so keep that in mind, but the whole idea is that you can actually get Bigsby to edit your photos. So if you want to hold this down, you can actually say auto adjust this, got it, auto adjust this photo. So that's how you can actually uh, edit the photo. Now in the final version, you should be able to say to brighten or darken this photo as well. And that's a really great hidden feature that a lot of people don't really know about. They know it, oh, doing commands for various things and all that kind of stuff. But really the fact that you can auto adjust is really nice. Now auto adjust is just a button on here. So it's not too big of a deal to say that. But once it gets to brightening and darkening a photo, I think that'll be a lot more useful and something quick and easy to be able to edit just by using Bigsby Voice. Now by far one of my favorite hidden features is a feature that has gone out unfortunately now. Although I will say this, I discovered it before launch, so I should still get credit for it over anyone else. Just saying. You go into settings and you can actually use the fingerprint sensor to swipe down and pull down your notification panel. Now how do you do that you may ask? Well. All you have to do is go into advanced features and then go into finger sensor gestures and turn this on and then you can always swipe up and down. This is really great, especially if you're right-handed. I actually find myself doing this a lot because for right-handed, it's very easy to swipe up and down uh, on here. So you have that ability to do it very simple and easily. I really like that feature for this purpose. It's really just great uh, be able to swipe down when you have a lot of notifications and it's just easier. You don't have to reach up. You don't have to do anything else. And if you don't have Nova Launcher, this is probably the quickest way to pull down the notifications. Now for this next hidden feature, it has to deal with this bottom part right here, the navigation bar. Now you can do a lot of things to this navigation bar and it starts from going into settings, then display, and then you swipe down and go to navigation bar. From here you're able to do a couple of different things. The first thing is you can actually customize the color of this display so you can actually choose it to whatever you want. You can make it green, darker green, blue as I've had it. You can even you know change it to whatever kind of color and style you want. So I really do like that touch effect 
that you can make it however you want it. You can also make it right here to unlock with the home button. So if you press the home button, it will skip the unlock screen and go directly to the home screen if you don't have a password, of course. And here you can also change the button layout. So if you're used to stock Android, you're going to want it to go like this. Unfortunately, after having Samsung smartphones for so long, I am used to this, so I keep it that way, even though I will acknowledge that this way is probably easier. You can also adjust the home screen sensitivity to have a very low sensitivity like that, or you can adjust it to have a very high sensitivity so you feel the button a lot more and really have to press down on it hard. So for that reason, this is how you can edit the navigation bar at the bottom of your phone. Now this next hidden feature is definitely an answer to a lot of iPhone users. A lot of iPhone users have said, well, I really like when I get a notification on my iPhone or someone's calling that the flash lightens up. Well, guess what? You can do it on the S8 too. You go into settings, scroll down, go to accessibility, then go to hearing, and then right here, flash notification. This will blink the camera light and or the screen when you receive a notification or a call or even an alarm. So we'll flash the screen for you so you have it nice and ready and know when someone's calling. Now the next hidden feature is something that was finally, finally brought back and that is being able to hide apps. So you can do this one of two ways. You can pinch to zoom, go into home screen settings and hide apps. This is really good because if you ever were at a time when you didn't want someone to see certain apps, well, you couldn't really do that anymore. But now you can. You can hide whatever app you do not want anyone else to see. So I like that that you have that ability to hide whatever apps you do not want anyone else to see. So it's really great, simple, and easy for that purpose. Um, on the settings portion, it will take you there either way. Here's also where you can customize, by the way, if you want uh, to have a home screen only, if how big you want your home screen grid to be. I like 4x5, but if you want, you can make it up to 5x5. Five five. And you can even change the app grid as well to have more apps fit in here as well, whichever way you like it. But, of course, the biggest thing is going to be to hide apps. And just so I let you know, you can actually show the app button if you want. I actually like to hide it just because now swipe up and swipe down is how you find your apps. Alright, now this next feature really was found out when my friend had his kid and really this is how to baby proof your phone. So if your kid loves to touch your screen, loves to play with your phone, but you don't want them calling people, emailing people, doing all this stuff on your phone, this is how you can give them your phone without them being able to do anything on it. So I call this baby proof mode. You go into settings, swipe up, go to accessibility, then dexterity and interaction, and then interaction control. From here, what you do is you actually can lock the phone from being able to do anything but unlocking it with the power and volume up buttons. Now what I mean by this is, is you can actually even do this to a friend's phone put it on whatever screen you want just to mess with them hit hit the block the whole display and make sure the options for all of these are off that way if they hit a button it will not work and yes you can set a time limit on it if you want your kid to play around with it or if you want to put your friend on timeout you can do this and they have no way of knowing how to undo it so once you do this you hit done and now it's on for one minute. So I can't hit the home button, I can't hit the back button, I can't do anything in order to stop it. Nothing works. Bigsby doesn't work, the uh, screen doesn't work, anything like that. So you can have your kid watching a video and this way they cannot do anything to it. There's nothing they can hit or do to get out of it except for holding down the power and volume up button to unlock it. So for this next hidden feature, it's a really great one, and God, I love it. I wish actually more manufacturers would do this, and that is the calculator. The calculator hasn't been anything special in Samsung, but most people will not know that now you actually have the ability to do a unit converter built into it. I can't tell you how many times I just use Google Assistant for this, so I like the fact that I can actually 
just do different units, convert them right on the phone. It's a really nice, simple and easy way and I wish more manufacturers did this. It's just simple and easy and I love the fact that you can do all of these different ways and it just makes it nice and easy. You can know what a gigabyte is, what a terabyte is, a bit, a byte, all of these differences. You can now know what it means when people are talking about these features. I wouldn't trade this for the world. I love that it's built in on here so I can finally stop downloading a unit converter separately. So for this next hidden feature, a lot of people have heard of this, but this has Bluetooth 5.0. What does that mean? That means you can actually listen to two different headphones or speakers, even if they're different brands, simultaneously. Now how do you do that? Well, you just go into settings, go to connections, Bluetooth, hit the three dots at the top right, and then dual audio. Once you turn this on, you're going to be able, this will turn off uh, media volume sync, so just so you know, you cannot do both. Media volume sync just means that basically you can control it through the headphones only and not through the phone or the headphones. So now that I can connect to two devices, I'm just going to turn both of these on. And as you can see, now they are both connected. So you have the ability to do both of these uh, connected at the same time, and they both can operate for calls, media audio. That's actually a great way that most people don't think about. Both of these can be used for calling. So if you want to both talk on the phone, but you don't want it to be public, well, this way you can both wear headphones and talk on the phone, and it interacts both seamlessly. So that's a really great feature. You can also do this again with two different speakers, even if they're not the same brand. And yes, of course, these are not Bluetooth 5.0 headphones, so they are backwards compatible to any headphones or speakers you have from the past. Now for our last hidden feature, it definitely has to be about the camera as always. So this is probably my favorite feature of all in the Samsung smartphone. And that is the fact that you can have a floating shutter button. Now what this means is when you're holding your phone all at an awkward angle, you're now going to be able to hit it very easily no matter where you are. Now how do you pull up this floating shutter button? You hit the settings button down here and then you go all the way down to the bottom and turn on floating camera button. So it's easy, quick, simple to be able to have your photos taken any which direction. You never have to worry about reaching all the way down to the bottom. Now keep in mind you can also take a photo with the volume rocker, you can take a photo with the heart rate sensor, you can take a photo when you're doing selfies by going like this. There's lots of different ways you can take a photo but overall this is just the easiest way I feel like just because you can do that besides your voice. I think this is just a great simple way so you don't have to go all the way down to the bottom anymore. Alright guys, hopefully you did like this video. If you did, please give a like thumbs up down below. If you would be so kind, please subscribe to our channel, The YouTube Tech Guy, and see all of our latest videos. We do also have a live weekly show every Sunday at 8pm where I answer whatever questions you have live. Thank you as always for watching. Make sure to give that like thumbs up as well. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, The YouTube Tech Guy.